What's up nerds, I'm Ben, and today I'm here to talk to you about the Golden Globes which went down today. It's the first big award show off the rank. Did anyone embarrass themselves? What were the big surprises that went down? Stay tuned to find out. So if this is your first time here at Movie Nerds, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. What the hell does the bell notification do? I don't know. Why, why isn't it just one thing that does everything? Why, why? Why make it hard? Anyway, the Golden Globes, right? So every year I kind of sit down and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna see some good stuff here. You know why? Because the celebs at the Golden Globes are plied with alcohol. And I feel like that's always a recipe for disaster. And that's what I wanna watch, I wanna watch disaster. And if I ever record an album, I want this guy to produce my, make me beautiful duets. Cause he's freaking genius! This year, the thing that's being talked about the most actually happened before the awards on the red carpet. There's this random, random woman that was serving drinks to people, water, and um, she managed to photobomb a lot of people along the way. So first and foremost, right off the bat, that's probably the thing people are talking about most. Um, so do make sure you check all those photos out in detail because uh, some of them are quite hilarious. Jamie Lee Curtis is probably my favorite of the bunch. But the actual awards, I think this year is a bit of a mixed bag really. Um, probably the thing I was looking forward to the most was seeing how the two hosts, Andy Samberg and Sandra Oh would go. And I'm actually a bit disappointed with their performance. They, they played it safe. Um, I think in the current climate, it's not cool to be scathing and mean to people. So I think they pulled that stuff back a bit. This is not the Ricky Gervais show that we're used to. Um, it was, they were trying to be kind. It wasn't as scathing, it was a bit more, it was a bit uh, nicer. There was a couple of clever jokes here and there, more from Sandra O oh rather than, than Sandberg. But overall, I thought they played it quite safe. I actually think two of the presenters on the night, Amy Poehler and Maya Rudolph, did a great job. And they're probably a better pick for the Oscars than what these two would ever be. Um, unless Kevin Hart decides to let everyone convince him he should do it after all, which I don't think is going to happen. Let's start with the shock wins on the night. So I would honestly say I wasn't expecting Bohemian Rhapsody to take out Best Drama on the night. And I wasn't expecting Green Book to take out Best Musical or Comedy. But I think that just goes to show what a kind of average year it was at the cinema. And the best films, I still think, weren't even amongst the nominees. Like, you know, A Quiet Place and Leave No Trace and, I don't know, Avengers Infinity War. I mean, I know Marvel put uh, everything into Black Panther this year, but I don't think anyone actually thought Black Panther was going to win. Um, but yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody seems to be a big mainstream audience favourite but it's, it hasn't received the same kind of love from critics. So that's why I was genuinely surprised when it took out that award. And in the case of Green Book, there's been a lot of controversy as to whether that film is accurate in portraying that character's life and whether it's historically accurate. Um, a lot of the headlines are talking about A Star Is Born getting snubbed, but I didn't generally think that Lady Gaga or Bradley Cooper would win. I, I heard later on in the piece that Glenn Close's performance in The Wife was quite strong and she ended up winning to everyone's shock and surprise over Lady Gaga. And you could hear the gasps from the audience. They were genuinely shocked, especially Glenn Close. She was pretty shocked. No one's been this shocked since I found out Glenn Close was in Hook playing that man with the beard. Remember? Remember that? That was weird. Okay, so the acting categories. The one I was most disappointed in was actually a television category. Uh, Amy Adams got the snub for Sharp Objects and uh, Patricia Arquette won for Ben Stiller's series Escape at Danamora. I thought Amy Adams in Sharp Objects was the best performance I've seen in any HBO show for a long time. So that's the only one, that's the only category I really was kind of rooting for someone. Um, Patricia Clarkson did win for that show, playing a mother. If you haven't seen Sharp Objects, do check it out. Uh, P.S. Bud, Richard Madden won for Bodyguard, which is a lot of people's favorite show on Netflix last year. Very tense show. Uh, I think it was well-deserved. Rami Malek took out uh, best actor in a drama for Bohemian Rhapsody. And he was clearly surprised, clearly stoked. He's a really nice dude. I don't, th anyone who criticizes Bohemian Rhapsody, I don't think anyone's criticized him in that film. As I said before, I never actually thought Bradley Cooper would win in this category. I just, he was solid in that film, but I think his direction of that movie was more impressive 
than his actual performance. And I think Gaga outshines him in that film. So I think this was always Rami's to win. And on the other side, you've got best actor in a comedy or musical. And this was always going to go to Christian Bale. And let's just face the facts. He's going to win freaking everything over award season, including the Oscar. And his speech was quite humorous because he kind of alluded to the fact that when he opens his mouth, he says things he regrets. And I think he was kind of, what he was getting at there is, you know, that very well-known moment in Terminator Salvation. You know the one. Let's cut to it now. I want you off the fucking set, you prick. I'm sorry. No, don't just be sorry. Think for one fucking second. The, the fuck are you doing? Are you professional or not? Yes, I am. Do I fucking walk around and rip that? No, shut the fuck up, Bruce. Do I want? No. No. Don't shut me up. Am I going to walk around and rip your fucking lights down in the middle of a scene? Then why the fuck are you walking right through? Ah, uh, da 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 da, like this in the background. What the fuck is it with you? But yeah, I just thought it was funny in this current climate that he referred to that moment because I honestly think. If Christian Bale had blown up on a film set and was made public in that way, like tomorrow, he wouldn't be given a second chance. But because all that went down before this current climate, I think he got a free pass. Uh, he's undoubtedly a great actor and he thanked the makeup artist on this film. And I think that's, that's kind of warranted because much like Gary Oldman last year, they wouldn't have won if it wasn't for the fat face. Like, let's, let's face the facts. If you have a fat face, you're going to win an Oscar. Uh, the least biggest surprise of the night was probably Lady Gaga and Mark Ronson taking out best song for Shallow. In the shallow, hello. Someone pointed out to me the other day that that song doesn't have a second verse. And now that I've heard that, I don't know if I like it as much. It's weird. Would it have been that hard for them to write a second verse? Were they trying to keep it under a certain amount of time? Are they thinking about Oscars night when they perform it? and they want to perform it in full, but that it can't be too long. And, Cause it's going to be like, it's definitely going to win Oscars. All right. I don't even know why they're bothering with that category. Like they should just name the winner already. Um, and she's definitely going to cry on the night. Cause man, she cried today. She loves a good cry, but I think nerds everywhere rejoiced when Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse took out best animated film, sucked in Incredibles 2. You've got all the money, but really this is like, there's no one debating that this is this is the best animated film. It should go on to win the Oscar. And yeah, it's just great to see Phil Lord and Chris Miller after the year they've had. They brought it home. They brought it home strong. Solo, Solo is a distant memory now. So uh, yeah, go web go. So Roma is obviously a big talking point because it wasn't eligible for the main drama category, but it was in foreign language. And that's just a kind of weird thing that the Golden Globes have, a weird rule where you can't be in one category and not the other category. So Alfonso Cuaron got up there uh, twice. So he got up there for foreign language and best director. Look, this guy is going to win a lot of Oscars. This, this film's had a lot of money put behind it by Netflix. Is it going to be a historic win for Netflix come Oscars time? We'll see what happens over the course of awards season because quite often these big films, they suffer from fatigue. And by the time the Oscars comes around, they want to give it to that film that no one's expecting. Yeah, so overall, this year's Golden Globes for me were a little bit forgettable. I actually do think this is one of the weaker crops of films we've had in recent times. Um, and that was echoed in everything in this award ceremony. Obviously last year, Time's Up, all this kind of stuff that was going on, there was a lot of um, powerful speeches and that whole thing was going on. So it kept the award show kind of um, like interesting to watch. This year it was kind of like, that was all gone. There was a lot more color, obviously, not as much black being worn on the red carpet. But yeah, it seemed to be, everyone was trying really hard not to offend anyone in any of their speeches. And as a result of that, I think we lost a little bit of the fun. Of all the speeches I heard today, only one of them stood out and it was Olivia Coleman, who won for The Favourite. And um, I think she was pretty tipsy. And she, um, yeah, she, she dropped the F-bomb. She swore a few times and she just didn't give a fuck like straight up. And that's, that's great. But I wanted to see more of that. Like that's what the Globes is, Globes is for because it's a Golden Globes. Like what the hell is the Hollywood Foreign Press Association anyway? No one even knows. So yeah, Golden Globes. I give it probably like three stars out of five. Um, 
Yeah, so that's it from me for this wrap up. We might do a few more of these over the course of award season and we'll definitely do something special for the Oscars. Until next time, I'm Ben and we'll see you nerds at the movies. Um, and even Mark Ronson was tearing up a little bit as well. God bless his soul. Um. <laughs> was it the other way around? I don't know. Shit. I can't remember. <laughs> but.